This is going to be a tutorial for the NES Sprite Packer tool. So the first half of this tutorial doesn't actually involve NES at all. The tool is actually entirely usable outside of NES. So if you're not using NES, just watch the first half of things. So there is uh, some documentation on the Sprite Packer in the core section. Uh, you can see the Sprite Atlases section. This is basically what we're going to be uh, doing uh, live in this video here. And you can also find some more information, especially pertinent for those uh, not using NES, in the Sprite Atlas Packer readme file, which has the details of the command and all of the available options. So let's go ahead and jump right in here. So what this tool does is it creates a Sprite Atlas from a folder of images. And it also has the ability to create Sprite animations that are per folder. So let's take a look at an example folder here. So this is the folder right here. Uh, enemies and you can see underneath it it has five subfolders so each of these subfolders will actually be turned into a sprite animation so all of the all of the pngs from all of the folders will be included in the atlas and then in addition to that the tool will generate animations for each of the subfolders now uh, in the case of something uh, like this for example if we were to have these files be in the root and remove that so now we have something that looks like this. We would get four animations, and then all of these PNGs would not be a part of an animation. They would be still accessible in the Sprite Atlas. They just wouldn't be a part of any, any animation. So let's go ahead and remove those. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open a terminal. So the Sprite Atlas Packer, you can see I stuck the exe in here. Uh, there is a pre-built uh, binary in the repository. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is, you can see we're right in the, in the enemies tool. We just run this with mono. And let's take a look at some of the options here. So for, for our particular use case, uh, we're going to need uh, to, out, to get a, an image output and uh, a map, which is our atlas file. So let's just grab those two bits right here uh, and we want to tell it which folder to use and we want it to use the folder that we're currently in so we'll just do that. Okay so you can see it spits out two things. Here's our sprite atlas that, and here is our atlas file. And uh, the atlas file format is really simple. Uh, for those not using NAS again uh, you can just uh, grab the atlas importer. Uh, from NES or write your own if you want if you're not using C sharp uh, so what that actually looks like and where you can find it is uh, in NES.portable in the assets we have Sprite Atlases and the loader so Sprite Atlas loader is all you would need and parse Sprite Atlas is the method and this is the actual code that runs through the Atlas and pulls out the data so for those of us using NES, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, but just a quick look at this, so in case you need to hand edit the file, it's very easy to do. Uh, especially interesting for hand editing is the this right here. So first is the rect of, uh, of the sprite. You're not going to want to touch that in most cases. But here's the interesting bit. You can, uh, by default, the pivot point is going to be set to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, which is the center of images. So you can actually come in here and change the pivot point of your sprites if need be. So these are all of the different sprites that were stuck into the atlas and you'll notice down here uh, there is the subfolder names that we had and these are going to be our sprite animations. So we can load any of these strings. We can load these strings to load a sprite and these strings here to load a sprite animation. So now we need to get this into our project. So what we'll do is I'm just going to grab both of these. I'm going to stick these uh, just as an example into the NES samples repo. So we'll stick uh, stick these in here. 
so you just drag them in. You can copy or move, doesn't matter either way. And the important bit here that you need to do is select the file, and this is the same in, the, in Visual Studio, Mac, or uh, in Windows. In the properties, you just set it to copy if newer for both the Atlas and the PNG. And what that's telling Visual Studio to do is to just make sure that it, it actually copies these into our output folder. So now let's use them. Uh, first thing we need to do is load up the Atlas. And we can do that by using the Content Manager. And there's a Load Sprite Atlas method. You just point it to the Atlas. So you want to point it to the Atlas file, not the PNG file. And you'll notice something here. We actually need to pass it the full path, so including content. So uh, when you're loading an XNB file, you don't actually need to include content. It's automatically uh, prepended for you. But for loading atlases, we can load these at runtime from anywhere. So, and it's just using the title container directly. So there's no stipulation that it has to be in the content folder. It can be anywhere. So we're gonna just load it like so and make sure we spell everything correctly so if all goes well this should load up our atlas for us okay so you can see right here we have an atlas we have our animations which match our folder structure exactly and then we have all of the available sprites in the atlas as well Great, so that worked fine. So now let's actually uh, display something on screen here. So we're gonna need an entity first. And let's use the B as an example. So we're gonna create entity and let's set the position so that we can see it easily to the center. And now what we're going to do is uh, add a component on here, and the component is the sprite animator. So the sprite animator uh, has a, a helper method that actually lets you just give it a sprite atlas, and it will pull all of the sprite animations out of that atlas and make them available for you to play. So you can see add animations from atlas here. And this will grab those for us, and then we can play it. And the one we want to play is B. Okay, so let's just uh, parse all this. Normally, you, you wouldn't probably chain all this together like so, but for a quick example, that's how we're going to do it. So first thing we do is we create an entity called B, uh, set it to the center so we can see it. Then we're going to add the sprite animator component. And these two methods are acting on Sprite Animator. Uh, so add animations from Atlas and then play an animation. So all that together, let's see what it looks like. So there's our B. And we can actually go in here and inspect the B. And you can see we have our Sprite Animator here, which we can enable and disable. We can change the speed that the animation is playing. And of course, you can do all these via code. Can make it fast, slow, can flip things. All of the, the regular sprite uh, bits are in here for you. So that's it. A quick rundown of creating a sprite atlas and using it with Nest.